This is one of the most uh, spectacular and unique in particular. There's only one site that has this type of shape of these archaeologists. There's no anywhere else, like you can see the same shape. And of course, uh, this archaeological site was found by Mr. Hiram Bingham when the first time he came. After when an Inca they left, after Manco Inca ordered to these people to abandon like, the site, there's no anyone lives anymore in this hike, in this part of the trail, as well in Machu Picchu. So it was since them, like if we're talking about since uh, 1546 or 36, about the Incas to abandon like, the site. So nobody else lived anymore here. It was completely abandoned. So, and then later, about uh, 1911, or 1915, actually, when Mr. Hiram Bingham came here, and this was the first man who found the site. When he came, of course, this building still had uh, some wood like this, some wood, very old wood. Mm -hmm. Maybe a few, some thatched of very old ones. And then the, and the other side as well. So, and then, the, of course, uh, when the Hiram Minga was here, coming exploring the site, he didn't use the horses, donkeys, nothing else. He used in the local porters, Quechua, Quechua people. So they were carrying us out of porters, they were carrying all the Hiram Minga stuff. So they, when they got to the top right there, and they saw this building here. They saw this building where you can see the Romelius sticking, sticking up there, just right below the cloudy, on the mist, it's right from there. They saw this. And then the, it's amazing, wow. You know? And then the, they didn't know what was the utility, what was the function of this archaeological site. So the catch was, of course, when they saw this, saw it, because it's like a circle like this, you can see, and that's the entrance, there's another entrance. So here you can see, uh, it's like this building. A building here around here, this circle in the middle. Mm -hmm. you can see right in the middle. Mm -hmm. So when they saw the circle like this, the Quechua people the first thing what they call this head, they call Runtu Rakai. Runtu means egg. Rakai means the old building. So that's how the Quechua they gave the Runtu Rakai, the ovider shape. But the Hyramika they couldn't pronounce probably properly Quechua like say Runtu Rakai, he changed Runku Rakai. So since see them, it has been called Rum, Rum Kurakai. Well, according to him, this Rum Kurakai was a very important site, which was used as the special lookout of fortress. Obviously, why? You can come here, you can see, before the cloudy covers, look at the from here, look at the dead woman pass. Can oh, you see? Yeah. You can see directly the dead woman pass from here. Oh, nice. You can zoom it up. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a dead woman pass. But if you come a little back here, guys. Did you see? Yeah, uh -huh. Just a little here. I don't want to talk about it. I want to show you something. I'm going to wrap it for the floor again. Can you see above the cloudy, the line crossing? That's just through to the waterfall. Can you see the line? Do you remember that yesterday, uh, Christopher, when you climbed up there? You see that tra trail crossing like this. That's the line. Can you see the line above the cloudy? Mm -hmm. Like this? Yeah. That was the origin in Kachel goes straight to the, the other side of the mountain. Wow. So that, that's a dead room pass. The trail we came all the way from dead room pass down is not original. The trail we walked from the bottom to here is not original. This has been done by the government. Last, um, this. Uh, they, people doing very often since about the 1950s, this trial. <coughs> very often. And before that, like, this was found in 1915. In 1942, there was another big founding institute that came with the Paul Flejos. And the Paul Flejos, the first time he dropped a map from Machu Picchu all the way to Yachta Patra, or Pata Yachta. He was dropped. And then later, there's many other classes. That's why. Uh, people started hiking as a big group of important adventures since about 1950s, 1960s. <coughs> so by the time they didn't walk this, they walked that way. That was the trail. Oh, Even like when I came here, like I was 16 years old or 17, I came to deal with this trail. And down there, there's a particular flying flight. Up there, up there, there's the trail is missing. The trail fell off, so we couldn't climb. So we have to use rope. That's how we climb. Oh, <laughs> That's just the adventure. Yeah. 
And then finally the government will be trapped properly. But this is the original. From here we're going to work all the way down to the future. Original, almost 80% original. Wow. But however, this part of the site has been already has been restored. Mm -hmm. Because since the 1950s until uh, 10 years ago, there's a lot of people used to come with uh, of, uh, people with the backpackers, with no, no org organized group. So they can come any time without a guy, without travel legends. But and then these people, they used to camp in here, they're making fire you know, everywhere. We used to camp on the other side. So people camping and taking pictures, they're walking on the wall, and that's caused to destroy us. That's why this already has been rebuilt. Even you can see clearly here what an archaeologist marked like this has been marked. You can see a little line here has been marked. So that's how they, they are closing it. So that's mean already has been rebuilt. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, so look at the world's coming. So what, anyway, this room, Kurakai, again was used by, as a lookout because of that window, which could be, you can check perfect, you know. But that's according to Mr. Hiram Bigam said. But what about the other archaeologists they said? What the archaeologists they said, this room, this room, Kurakai, was very interesting, not for look out, because for the military purpose, we needed something to build something much higher. Like, for example, right there. So you can see through that other side valley, in between this valley. But uh, here, we are in between these valleys right here. So the other archaeologists, they say, when we were here, they found a lot of, of llamas, alpacas, bones. But like you were, you saw, you're going to see a couple of lakes up there. So there was a perfect, properly, the llamas farm, alpacas farm. So these animals can eat, drink this you know, water. So and then they found a lot of llamas bones. So because of that, they was taking care of llamas, alpacas. And this a little here, the corral. This was the corral. When the baby llama has a baby llama, so they're protecting from the puma. So they bring in here the baby llama, and they're protecting here until the baby llama gets bigger. Mm -hmm. So that was used for this corral. That's why there's no anywhere, there's no anywhere in Peru we can find like this structure like in the middle, look at the building on the both sides. So the people that live here, they must use a corral. So that was a use this room Kuraka. So actually has a two theories, so far I'm explaining. There's so many others. Someone says they can reach inside, you know, some of the, uh, the storage area. So they, some people consider it was a storage area because down the sacred valley, that's on the bottom. We were just yesterday, day before yesterday, we are on the side of the mountain. So we see a lot of terrorists in the mountain. So I think people, they brought the food all the way up here to storage and food here. But this is located in a cave, you know? Like, look, look at the valley. So it's not that cold. So that's why it could be storage area. See how the guys say it was a ceremonial say, religion? Or like Temple of Sun, which people the shape and others that they walk, looks like in Coricancha. But the stone work is not that fine. Because this type of stone work we call Pirka, common work. It's not fine, it's not, mm. not best architecture. So that's why some of those it's all this. So it just could be look out or it was a special corral to, to farm in Lama Sampak. That was used for this uh, room Okay? Cool. So, and then the, you can come here a little bit, please. <clears throat> Look at this a little rectangular building, which is totally separated from this. So what was, could it be that building was used for? Well, uh, there's no exactly any information we have because we don't have a written language here. So probably that was used for the messengers. The messengers of justice, mm -hmm. the guys who running from this point to the other point, carrying the messengers, taking people. Messengers, I was talking to you. This is the, the rope, has like this uh, not rope with knots like this, different knots like this. That's called kipu in Quechua. So that's how the, the guy, special guy we call kipu kamayo, makes kind of knot, different colors, rope, and then the messenger has to carry this, has to run every 20. 20 or 30 kilometers away. So, from whatever people come from Uliantaitam or Uzahtapata, the guys who stay there, they get the messengers, and that's from he takes all the way down to the other side. So, that was useful. That is the, another tier we have talking about the sites. Okay? So, this is the about this key. So, that was useful. Station or checkpoint for the messengers, that building. Mm -hmm.